why he's been gone from the theater since August. We're going to find out what he's up to and what new project he's got going on. Please welcome to the stage, Mike Lazarus! So, I don't know how many of you know me, I've seen me here before, I have, uh, I used to come here every day almost for two and a half years. Uh, I performed almost every weekend here for over a year, and um, I got to a point where I was like, this isn't fun, right? It's not fun, and I'm not getting paid, so what's the point of me coming here all the time, right? So, uh, I said, you know what, I'm taking some time off, I need to figure out who I am, right? <laughs> I need to figure out my identity. What's my point of doing comedy? Why am I doing this to myself? Because I'm driving myself into the ground and going crazy. And I didn't come up with an answer for a long time. And I uh, went to New York, which is where I came from, uh, before I moved out here. And I hadn't been back since I moved here. And um, I went to a magic show when I was in New York. Um, and when I walked in, um, there, there was a big board, and somebody had to go up to the board, and everybody in the audience had to go up to the board, and you had to define yourself. You say, I am, and then an adjective or a job or something underneath it. And I was like, oh, fuck, here we go. I couldn't figure out who I was in Austin. I had left comedy. I can't figure, what, who the fuck am I, right? So I'm like, I'm walking, I'm like, oh, I am, no, I'm not. Not cool, you know. I'm not. So like, I, I walked through everything, and then and then I was just and I stopped, and I was like, I, I'm a talk show host because I used to be the host of the panel show, or or a co-host of the panel show. I don't know if you guys are familiar. It's a show here. Uh, JJ Pistols is, uh, is the host. It's great. I love the panel show. Yeah. Um, and it, it just like came to me. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm a talk show host, right? So I went over, and it was there. <laughs> like of all the things in the world, it's there. So I pick up on the talk show host. I walk over. And you hand it to the attendant there, and she takes it, and she folds it, she takes the talk show host thing, puts it on the pile, and gives you the I am back. I'm staring at this, and I go to my seat, and I'm like, I am, right? I am. And I was like, no one knows who we are, but we all think we do. And you think of me some way, and I think of me some way, and ultimately both of us are right, right? Because how you define yourself and your identity and everything else is ultimately what the world thinks of you. But in reality, we're all connected in some way or another, right? So I started thinking, well, why don't I do that if I'm a talk show host? Why don't I start introducing people to other people? We have an identity. We hear something. We have a perception. We see something. We have a perception. And then we get to know somebody, and it's a completely different perception of what that really is, right? So that's the new idea, this new show, it's called Glimpses, at least that's the working title. And uh, I have a guest here, um, I'm going to bring him out in a second. However, if you want, you can live tweet us questions. I just created a Twitter for it, grab, out, you grab your phone out, you can send me a, a question, you can send him a question. It's at Glimpses underscore Austin. Um, Rob is going to be somewhere, uh, and if you don't have a phone and you can't do a Twitter, well, Rob's there. Um, if you don't have it, you can run over to Rob and just whisper it in his ear, and he'll shout it out to us. Okay? Um, so let's meet who our guest is tonight. Woo! I'm a rap aficionado who loves the original Willy Wonka movie so many times I've seen it over 500 times. Every year I do an in-depth in -depth study. This year I'm studying Stoicism and philosophy. And I can make some of the best pork ribs you've ever had in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, DM Metter. Now, uh, just real quick, I yeah. see some people squinting, trying to see exactly what oh, the okay. uh, thing is. I'm going to put that down. Oh, that's the thing. I think we have one follower, by the way. Rob Gagnon, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Two. <laughs> it's growing yeah. exponentially. So, um, DM, me and you, we've worked together for a while. DM's a close friend of mine. He is. I, I cheated. 
for my first guest, uh, somebody I know really well, someone who I know has uh, absolutely no shame and will we'll talk about anything. So it's perfect person for this. I am an open book. He is. Genuinely, yeah. Um, DM uh, actually used to be Dennis Metter. But my dad stole my name. Did he really? Yeah. So I'm a junior. Okay. And my whole life, my dad went by Randy when I was a kid, and then all of a sudden became Doc. And then three years ago, and I adopted. No, our middle initial, our DR, like oh, Dennis okay, okay, okay. Randolph Metter, senior or junior. Okay. So he'd always been a different name, and I'd always been Dennis. And then three years ago, I called to talk to him, and I got voicemail, and he said, "Hi, this is Dennis." And I was like, my dad literally just stole my name back. I'm 36 years old, and now I don't have a name anymore. And I always wanted to go by initials. I always thought that would be super cool. So I tried JR, because I'm a junior, and that really didn't work. Everyone in Texas, and you just can't be JR in Texas. I didn't want to go by junior either, because... I'm in Texas and I don't want to be called Junior. So I just uh, DM kind of came out. Also, there's a thing at work that it kind of coincides right. with. So that's what I go by now. Right. It reminds me of when I was uh, I was in high school. I went to a Catholic high school, um, both in the same like Lazarus. Even though my 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 mother's side is Catholic, I'm obviously Jewish in a Catholic high school. So um, when I was there, you know, they, oh, we're having a multiple faith, you know, ceremony. Bring out the Jew. I knew nothing about it. I was like, there's a passage about goats. Can we find one? Right? So, so I went to college. I went to a college, big Jewish population, there. and um, then they were like, oh, your mom's not Jewish. Fuck you. You're not Jewish anymore. So I went through this identity crisis. Molina, can you uh, search in Twitter at uh, glimpses underscore Austin? Uh, oh, sure. People say some stuff. Um, okay. We can pull it up live. I have a few questions I'm curious about. Okay. <laughs> you guys are. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to keep it, right? Yeah, right? Uh, I'll let you take it. Yeah. Oh. Oh wow. Well the balding one, who is that for? Yeah. Because <laughs> one of us is gonna be really offended. <laughs> I've been bald for a long time. Um, your worst sexual experience. So real quick then, so what was the person you had a drink of alcohol? Thirty-five. How old are you now? Forty. So that was five years ago. What happened the first thirty-five years ago? I grew up in a very, very, very religious family. I actually became a Baptist preacher at 16. Pastored my first church at 18. Pastored for 18, 30, yeah, about 15 years. And I was one of those, like, stand on the street corners with signs, deliver you from hell, kind of. And so don't hate me because that's not the end of the story. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> But I, but I was that guy. Like I was very intense, very uh, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Like I said, I pastored my first congregation at 18 years old. Um, traveled uh, all across the country from 21 to 24, and actually back and forth to Europe, and did a lot of mission work and spoke in big gatherings of people. And so, uh, so yeah. So I drink about. I didn't have a TV in my home. Uh, Oh, pro I mean, like I had a TV and it had channels, because channels, they were <laughs> 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 you know. So VCR tapes, so. Yeah, which yeah. is why I've seen Willy Wonka 500 times. <laughs> That's the truth. Right, right. I watched it every week for 15 years. <laughs> See something to watch. Something! <laughs> so, uh... Hey, real quick, um, what's your go-to karaoke jam? My go-to karaoke jam? I've got a couple of them. Um, Ain't No Sunshine by Otis Reddy, and um, <laughs> not by Otis Redding, that's no, by uh, the other guy. Yeah, the other guy. The other, <laughs> Otis Redding, the Doc of the Bay. Right, that's what, Ain't No Sunshine, so and, uh, Ain't No Sunshine? And then, Ain't No Sunshine. Ain't No Sunshine. Ain't No Sunshine. There isn't any sunshine, it's just gone. <laughs> the Timothy 
temperature isn't proper when she's away. Uh, Garth Brooks, uh, Friends in Low Places. Okay. So those are my two kind of go-to. Okay. Um, what's, what's up with the tattoos? So this is actually my very first tattoo I've ever gotten in my entire life, and I got it about three weeks ago. Uh, so I'd never had a tattoo. I'd always wanted a tattoo. I'm actually... Uh, <laughs> So I, uh, this, th there's a couple things to represent here. This here, just an abstract pretty girl. So I have a 16 year old daughter and I, uh, I call her pretty girl. So this is kind of representative of her. And then there's a path with roses and thorns, compass and embrace your journey. And so it's just kind of symbolic of my life, roses and thorns, but embracing all of it. And then my 16 year old daughter, uh, I also have a 12 year old and a, a 12 year old daughter, 17 year old son, which I've got this arm worked out for. Uh, but yeah, so that's this tattoo. My first tattoo, I sat there, I walked in on Sunday morning when they opened at noon, noon, and I left at 9.30 that night. Wow. And it was an intense, intense day. <laughs> Um, Alright, we're going to take one more off the screen, I'm going to ask you one more thing after this. How does one go to heaven? And, and you know what, this is, this is a good question, wait, wait, wait. How does Dennis, De how would Dennis say someone goes to heaven, and how does DM say someone goes to heaven? Hmm. So, I mean, at one time, obviously being a Baptist preacher, I would proclaim that you must accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, admit that you're a sinner, and admit that He's the only way uh, that you can get there. Um, through a series of a lot of study, through a series of a lot of things in my own personal life, I have a daughter that came out, she was about 13, 14, that's what kind of began my path away from church, um, understanding that those things that I had always accepted dogmatically were no longer acceptable in my life because I wasn't going to treat my daughter the way that I had, though I never treated people that way, I knew that the group of people I surrounded myself with, with would. Um, so how does one go to heaven as defined by me at this moment? <laughs> Listen, my friend, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> um, I stand before you a man who dogmatically had everything figured out until I realized I was probably wrong on everything. And so being willing to accept that at lots of different junctures in your life makes for a much better life. If you're not seeing yourself as a fool three to five years ago, hmm. you're probably not growing enough. <laughs> and that's the way that I view life. I was going to ask you to tell another story, but I don't think I need to do that now. Um, someone did put anal sunshine on the screen, so I appreciate that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, that's about all I have tonight, guys. Uh, this, was, this was really good. Did you guys enjoy this? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you uh, taking part. I appreciate you hanging out, listening to some stories. Um, I think this won't be the first time we do this. And uh, you know, I, I appreciate you guys tweeting too, man. I didn't realize that was going to happen. Uh, I didn't see it. So thanks, everybody. And uh, let's bring Rob back down.